The Daisy family has dreamed of a home theater for years, but all they've got now is a big empty gray box. I like to really have this as an escape for us. Our designers have $35,000 to create movie magic, but will there be theatrics along the way? Find out next. Right near historic Valley Forge sits Chester Heights, Pennsylvania. The Philadelphia suburb where Sayre and Daryl Daisy live with their son in a home they helped design. We had this house built about six years ago. We were really involved in the design process. We love the open floor plan that it has a separate living room on one side and a dining room on the other side. Yes, it's 3,300 square feet. It has four bedrooms, two and a half baths, and we really enjoy raising our child here. Daddy's gonna win. No, I don't right. win. Benjamin goes Daddy's first. Daddy's gonna win. I love that we have a fireplace in our bedroom. The sitting room is really a great space, and just generally, I like the size of our bedroom. It's just spacious enough for us. And one of the best things is uh, on the weekends, uh, our three-year-old son, Benjamin, kind of sneaks in here when he wakes up and cuddles in between the two of us. Wake up, I want to watch TV! And watches some cartoons as we catch a, you know, another <laughs> hour or so of sleep. Of sleep. <laughs> so that'll be a great memory, I know, when we get older. The room that we want the designers to help us with is here in the basement and we want to build a home theater. Since we've had Benjamin, we don't get out to the theater as much as we'd like to, so I'd like to really have this as an escape for us. When you come down the steps, I want to have kind of a lobby area with a popcorn popper, maybe a counter for candy and refreshments, sconces on the walls, maybe fiber optic lighting in the ceiling. We're also looking for maybe a little stage area in front because Benjamin might want to give us some skits and he loves to sing and perform. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. Sari and Daryl want to give the room the look of a grand old movie palace, but they have a special request for the room you won't find in other theaters. My last name is Daisy. I have a lot of Very Daisy different. candles and some other, you know, Daisy focused things that I like to incorporate in the room just to add some small touches. I want kind of bold, you know, modern colors. I was thinking purple. Red, uh, gold, I really like. So just something fun and something that'll really stand out and make you feel like you're in a theater. Our son has not seen the basement before, so I'm excited that he'll have another area he can play in and invite his friends over and watch shows. So I think it'll be great for yep, everybody. I do too. Sari and Daryl have a budget of $35,000, excluding electronics, to create a home theater in their basement. They'll give one of these local designers the job. First is Jennifer Nielsen of Jennifer Ingrid Nielsen Interior Design. The Philadelphia area is rich in historic homes. This one, the client allowed me to take a very old building and use colors that were bright and contemporary furniture that worked within a very old environment. The challenge in this project was to make the theater feel like a space not in the basement. And I tried to do that through use of color. Next is Terry Wasdyke of Brandywine Design. I find that a lot of clients in this area tend to be more traditional. Typically they prefer darker woods, bigger, chunkier, heavier furniture, a lot of window treatments. They also tend to like darker, richer colors. I really had a lot of fun working with Daryl and Sari on this project. We loved the bold, vibrant colors that they wanted to use. We loved the fact that it was a theme on this project, and it was really nice to do something a little bit more outside the box. And our last designer is Joseph Anthony of Joseph Anthony Interiors. Home theaters traditionally are more or less an escape from people's everyday lives. Working with the colors, the fabrics, the sound, the beautiful picture, and the families are what I like most about home theaters. One of the challenges I face in the Daisy Home Theater is to design the ductwork so we're not losing a lot of ceiling space. The cavity below the stairs, I'm going to have to consider putting the equipment in there, but I think we could get a warm looking home theater down here for the Daisies. Coming up next, the experts set the stage for their presentations. A little something to get you in the mood. But the drama doesn't end there. Just the logistics of coordinating all the timing of the material, the electronics, the craftsmen being here, it was uh, quite a daunting challenge. Daryl and Sayre's basement has been sitting unfinished for six years. 
three Pennsylvania designers are figuring out how the couple might turn it into a home theater without going over their $35,000 budget. First up is Jennifer Nilsson, who mixes modern colors and vintage touches to create a dramatic space. I also would like this not to feel like a basement, but the lower level of your home. <laughs> so I've done that through lighting, but I've also incorporated into the design the staircase. New carpeting and padded so you won't hear people's feet coming down the stairs. And then I'm going to be using the rope lighting either side of the stairs so that I'll give a wonderful feeling of ambiance. To make the theater more intimate, Jennifer separates it from the rest of the basement. If you look straight ahead is one of your marquees mm -hmm. that will be backlit, framed in brass. You turn right and there will be beautiful red velvet drapery. Great. Granite adds a sophisticated look to the stained mahogany concession stand against the back wall. Either side will be beautiful columns with sconces trimmed with brass. You know, where's the popcorn maker? Okay, popcorn <laughs> maker, can't forget that, yeah. is right here okay. on this surface, along with your candy and any other neat little things that you want to have on display. To the right will be the bar for people to gather before they go and actually sit down. When everyone's ready for the show, they'll sit in two rows of reclining chairs covered in durable suede-like fabric. It will clean, it's easy to clean unbelievably well. Even if it dries, you can easily clean it. Going back to that older theater type, they always had a vaulted ceiling with beautiful hidden lighting. We're gonna do that. I want it to reflect. It's a vinyl and it has a shimmer to it. Yeah. Because of its thickness and the backing, it will absorb sound. Okay. And with this remote, you are gonna be able to control all the lighting, make this curtain open, and you will be able to adjust the sound. Sound absorbing panels spaced between the wood columns combined with surround sound speakers will ensure great audio. The dominant color will be this wonderful golden color. All these walls. We have this wonderful warm green color. The soffit will be painted that. And then where the screen is, I did a purple black. It gives that extra richness that we've been talking about. Nice. Thanks for all the effort and work. My we pleasure. We really appreciate it. Thanks Thank so much. You. Up next is Terry Wasdyke, whose plan offers an authentic movie-going experience with a personalized touch. To come into the space, it'd be really nice to have a red carpet going down the stairs, which would join into the theme carpet. Taking her cue from old movie houses, Terry proposes swinging double doors, a velvet rope, and directly across, a concession area. The popcorn machine would be in the back. There would be storage below, and also storage in the front part. We found these great chairs, the daisy chairs, <laughs> which I think would really give you some personalization in the space. We have your main seating in this area, two groups of two on each side, and we're gonna have the back grouping on raised platforms, about eight inches above. We were gonna have a couple of throw pillows up in front for the kids, and we again found another really fun daisy feature with the daisy fabric here. Knowing how Benjamin likes to put on a show, Terry designed the stage with him in mind and covered it with a black rubber material for safety. We really like the idea of having the columns on the stage because it gives it that stage-like feeling. Okay. We were going to paint those black and just use black speaker cloth and put the speaker inside of that. And then in the front of the stage, we have the motorized draperies, which is in a red velvet and with the gold fringe underneath. We're going to do the fiber optic lighting in the ceiling oh, for the stars. And we thought to give an even neater effect, a textured paint, and it's black and we add glitter to the paint so you can see it kind of has a sparkly effect. Terry plans to cover the walls and soundboards with a deep red textured fabric to help the acoustics in the room. We were going to do some custom pilasters on the sides that we were going to mount the sconces onto so there would be three of those on this wall okay. mm -hmm. and then we're actually going to have four on this wall because we were going to frame the doors. Terry finishes off the room with a personalized touch. We thought it would be really fun if we had each of your family 
to put their handprint, <laughs> just like the Groman Theater oh, in funny. Hollywood. <laughs> that's hard. <laughs> we have one for each of your family, and you could certainly oh. add it any time. They could just cut out the carpet and lay a new one oh, in there in great. case your family grows. That's a great idea. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Our final designer is Joseph Anthony, whose design for the room is pure theater. I want to create for you a total theater that is going to give you everything you ever wanted for your whole family. The seats actually will have a different fabric on it, which is a suede fabric. Oh, nice. And that's the color I chose for you. We'll have a pocket door on either side coming down the stairs so you can either go into the storage area or come into the theater. So a pocket and door sort of slides into the side wall? into the wall, okay. out of the way, so we're not swinging, swinging into, into the space. Okay. That's exactly. great. This is a snack bar, concession area. Oh. It is lighted, just like it would be in a regular so theater. you can access it from the front? It's from right the, from the, the side. Wall. Okay. Joseph chose an antique-looking popcorn popper for the corner of the room and finished off the back area with a table and stools for extra seating. I have a proscenium here, which is a frame all the way around the screen with a uh, keystone in the center. Also up front in the stage area, what I would like to do, uh, if especially Benjamin is gonna have friends there and doing some performances, is put yeah. a hinged drawer at the bottom so we can pull that out and he can keep props and costumes in there. <laughs> oh, and kind of keep it out of the way. Three identical columns wrapped in purple fabric frame the walls on each side. The purpose of this, not only for decoration, but I want to house the speaker within the column so you'll have your true surround sound without seeing any of the speakers. Between the columns, Joseph placed large panels to help prevent distortion. What I planned on doing is putting the Venetian plaster finish here around the sound panels with a gold molding to match your crown molding and your chair rail. I incorporated some oh, daisies in there nice. for you. I, like <laughs> <laughs> I also have shadow boxes with the same molding here. The framing around the shadow box will be the classic burgundy. The ceiling is going to be black. What I want to do in the perimeter and in the center is uh, recessed lighting, but in the very center, right over the seating, I want to incorporate an 8 by 12 foot fiber optic panel. Oh, cool. <laughs> and right over the top, it'll be a starlit night. So when, when all the lights are dimmed down, the center will remain there with the fiber optic lighting. To complete the movie theater illusion, Joseph added the ultimate detail. I've designed a little ticket booth for you. Oh, wow. As you come down the stairs, you'll get the feeling that you're actually in a movie theater. Mm -hmm. We'll have the Daisy Theater in, in gold lettering up here. As it should. I'm going to have a side door for Benjamin to come in and actually sell tickets if he uh, wants to. Hey. Well, I hope you're happy with everything else. Oh, super. Uh, it looks great. We appreciate the effort. My really. pleasure. It looks really nice. Now that the auditions are over, the couple must decide which designer gets the green light. But the coming attractions will take them by surprise. I really had no idea of everything that was involved. Don't go away. It's been a week since the designers showed Sayri and Daryl three different ways to create a spectacular home theater out of their basement. Who got it right? I was so surprised when all three designers came back with designs that were special and unique and it just made it incredibly difficult to make a decision. By the end, we chose Joseph primarily because his uh, design was more in line with our original vision of the, the grand movie palaces of, of the Philadelphia and New York areas. Joseph puts his crew to work, finishing off the basement walls. Today, Joseph brings Sari and Daryl to meet Rob Desi, who worked closely with Joseph on the technical aspects of the home theater design. I thought we'd come to Rob's place uh, because he has a theater set up very similar to the way yours is going to be, and he also is doing the audiovisual, so we can see how all the design elements and everything comes into play. Okay, want to go see? Yeah, yeah great. Great. Here's an example of an uh, Art Deco themed movie palace home theater. Wow. And we're taking wow. a lot of elements from this and using them in your theater in your home. Where are the speakers? In this room, the subwoofer and the front speakers are around the screen. Below that curtain. And the side speakers are built into this column, and rear speakers are built into the rear columns. When Rob does the columns, we're going to put the sconces pretty much in the same location with the wood element in the front. 
And we're also using the same chair rail and the same crown, only we're doing the crown in a flat orientation rather than on an angle. Okay. We've hidden all the equipment, not just the speakers, but the components are actually hidden in a, oh, in a okay. cabinet similar to this. So, so everything is out of the way. It, everything will work from a mm -hmm. wireless remote control, so you don't have to point and shoot at anything to, to make it work. What I'd like to talk about before we leave is maybe adjusting that faux finish color a little bit, toning it down because I thought it was a little bright on second thought, okay. and maybe looking at an alternate fabric that'll coordinate better with that. I had my faux finisher make up two more samples, uh, a light one and one that's a little more toned down. Okay. How they look to you? This one seems a little light to me. Yeah, I really like mm -hmm. this one. Absolutely. This one. We need to change this fabric now because of the contrast is right. not going to work very well. I went to this page because it's kind of had a metallic look mm -hmm. to it, and this yeah. has a little bit of a metallic finish. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of the coloring, I think this picks up the burgundy and it picks up the gold mm -hmm. pretty well. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's a, a match. All right, great. I will get it ordered and get moving. All, All right, great. Let's, Let's get, get started. started. Great. Back at the house, the ceiling height proves to be a problem, so an adjustment is made, the first of several. We felt this might be a little low, so we cut the ceiling back. It ended up uh, raising the ceiling on this side more. We changed the height of the chair rail, which knocked the shadow boxes down into where the outlets were, so we had to actually move the outlets down. So that's gonna give us a little extra delay here. Joseph has handled every crisis so far, but will his luck run out? Uh-oh, we got a problem. Stay tuned for the final results. Four months ago, Sayri and Daryl turned over their unfinished basement and their $35,000 budget to designer Joseph Anthony. Is their new home theater worth the price of admission? In the last few months, there have been some changes going on, not only in our basement, but uh, we're expecting our second child. When we decided to build this home theater, we really had no idea about everything that was involved. The results are, were beautiful and done on time, which is... Uh, and not, on budget. And on budget, exactly, which is not what you always expect in projects like this. Oh, wow, I love it. Oh, yeah. I think things really start to come together right at the beginning oh, of yes, the stairway. stairway. And yeah. the carpet. Mm -hmm. Love Daisy's oh, theater up there. <laughs> might be my favorite part of it. <laughs> yeah, it sets the tone. It really does. It's really a nice piece. Let's go in. We are absolutely thrilled. Absolutely. Just to absolutely yeah. amazing. I mean, this was a cinder block basement just a couple <laughs> months ago, and now we've got a movie palace. The best part is that everything is automated. And uh, on this touch screen control, you can open up the uh, the curtains, all, you know, with yeah, just great. one touch on the button. remote. Yeah, nice. and I love the new sconces that we chose. I mean, those are just. I beautiful. think they worked out perfectly. Yeah. The little tassel I think adds to the to the Art Deco feel. With a snack bar here, it gives well, that's the, one of the Benjamin's favorite. Real feeling <laughs> yeah. of being in a theater. And I love all the personal touches, especially like the Daisy Theater sconce. Having these custom tables made out of real movie reels, they just fit perfectly in here. Great. And, uh, Especially if we have extra people in the room, they can sit absolutely. in the back and still see the movie. Yeah. Even the popcorn maker, I mean, that's one of my favorite it Smells things. like it's ready. <laughs> it does smell very good, doesn't it? It smells very good. Tastes it'll good serve too. a lot of people, too. Uh, it's a high capacity, and and warmer. It'll, it'll stay for a long time. One of the nicest features I wanted to show you about the panels is that we can hide all of the components in here yeah. and these panels match the same scale as all the other panels. I'm very happy that we went with a different faux finish here and coordinated the new fabric. I think that looks very, very good, don't you? Colors yeah. are just beautiful. Yeah. Excellent decision. You know, the chair rail still coordinates with all the moldings and uh, of course our crown molding kept that Art Deco feel. Uh, and the ceiling just gives you a nice feeling about being outdoors, almost like a drive-in theater. It was a very tedious job to put these 400 fiber optics in the ceiling. And having people, you know, actually put them in one by one is tedious, but again, worth the effort. <laughs> the sound quality in here is, is 
is incredible. The speaker is enclosed in a sound chamber within the mm -hmm. column, so it fires out from the column on both sides, in the back and in the front, of course, with your center speaker. So you're really surrounded, literally, with sound that's coming directly at you. Well, I mean, you know, I, I wasn't a big person thinking the speakers made that big of a difference, mm -hmm. but I mean, I hear mm -hmm. sounds I never picked up before from right. my regular television right. set. We love the seats. We love to recline, actually. Yes. <laughs> The curtains are really just gorgeous. The tassels are beautiful. They really go with the Art Deco feel. And it was great the way we were able to get this look in here for Benjamin. He comes behind the curtain and changes his outfits mm -hmm. and comes back out on stage. Mm -hmm. so That's great. great. Well, you remember one of the challenges was the low ceiling. And with the duct being here, we did right. drop the stage down from our original height. Yeah. That's why I thought that that would work out really well back there. That's it does. I thought the carpet worked out well. This is the type of carpet you see in a lot of Philadelphia, New York, high-end uh, theater palaces. The room is just great. We are so just pleased with how everything, everything turned yeah. out. Obviously, you've exceeded our expectations. Oh, that's great. Yeah. We had a vision, but this really exceeded that vision. So that's thanks great. a lot for your time. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Seriously. Thank thanks. you, Jason. My Thank pleasure. You. Have a ticket, please. Sure. By using Art Deco details and state-of-the-art equipment, designer Joseph Anthony created a high-end movie palace that's ready for its close-up. Thanks for joining us on Designers Challenge. We'll see you next time when we put three more designers to the test. I'm Chris Harrison. One ticket, please. Okay. Here you go. Thank you. Enjoy the movie. Thank you, sweetie. And...